Well, hello there, my friendly acquaintances. Welcome to season two. Can you believe it? Season two, episode one of Fire Your Boss. And I am joined by the illustrious guests, Mr. Frank Guerin and Ooh. Dan T-Bone Jones, also known as Jonesy. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? He's got thrilled thr to be here. Thrilled to be here. And I, I need a couple more names because he's got Dan Jones, T-Bone Jones, and Jonesy. And I'm just Frank Guerin. I, I demand in my contract at least one more name. We need, we need to get you a nickname or something like that. A good like, nickname, though. No, I've got plenty of bad ones already, though. So Yeah, like, like you know, mm. so we can just use one word to describe you. Lover you know? boy. <laughs> Lover boy. Jared. That's what came yeah. to mind. What do you wow. want from me? This topic, we're going to be talking about lists, the email list, and why it is important. I remember years ago, first time I ever heard this phrase was by a man by the name of Alex Mandosian, and he had said, the money is in the list. The money is in the list. And that just smacked me right across the head. That was that was probably one of those punctuation marks on the timeline of my life where I didn't really understand what having a following was like. And your real following are people who who give you their email list or their emails and their you know, their personal information. For instance, it'd be nice if they gave you their email list. But the the interesting thing is a lot of people say, well, I have so many subscribers or so many followers. Well, do you really? Your social media platform does, but unless you have captured their emails, it's the property, so to speak, of the domain of the platform. You don't really own those because you could get canceled and there goes all that hard work. Your comments, Mr. Frank Guerin. Well, the money is in the list. And at one time, I had a, over a quarter of a million subscribers. So I can tell you, the money is in the list. And you're right. You don't own it on a social media platform. Um, even on something like AWeber. I mean, I've been with them 20-something years, never had a problem. But even there, if you're on a list company like AWeber, get response or, heaven forbid, MailChimp, um, you want to back up your list routinely weekly so that you have it's your book of business it's like an insurance you wouldn't dream of not protecting your book of business you know your your customers your clients same thing here man social media it could be gone in a minute even my dog agrees well-timed you i know there are some people that say Let, let's take it a step further the very old school people and i agree with this that you should have people's not just email, but you should also have their physical address and their cell number or phone number oh, as well. You can get that if, absolutely. If sure, yeah. that's real gold because believe it or not, direct mail is far from dead. I mean, it's you know, it's it it goes through cycles, and you'll get some pundits that say, "Oh, that's uh, you know, no nobody does it anymore." But that's not true. Um, I get mail from. Um, you know, different things that I donate money to, different charities and stuff all the time. Now, they're either stupid or the stuff works because as a charity, you have to prove every penny and, you know, make it worth, do the work of two pennies. So when I get my stuff in the direct mail and I open it, they've got me right there. So yeah, my point is if you can get their physical address as well and or a phone number, that that's like an Uber list. That's like a, a list plus, if you will. Yeah. Jonesy, what do you think about a list? Why is a list important? Do you have one? Why should everybody in business have a list? Well, I'm going to speak for the rest of the podcast now because I have a lot to say about lists, uh, <laughs> both from the tech standpoint and the marketing benefits of it. So I do want to note and, and kind of pick up where Frank started with having redundancy. Um, I have a tech background. I worked in IT for big IT companies uh, and also freelancing. Um, but redundancy is a key component of, of any IT system, of any system. Uh, we had a saying, one is not, two is one, one is none. So if you have something replicated and you have two of something in data, you really only have one. Um, so the, the more backups, the better. Um, so yeah, we use AWeber. I use, oh, here comes Vivian. Look at this doggy. Um, Making her that? cameo. Yeah. Come here, Viv. Be a good girl. That's who you heard barking before, ladies and gentlemen. My ferocious new mini pincher. 
fresh from the rescue shelter. Absolutely. All right. I've got one discourse. I'm going to back on topic. If since T-Bone is my dog and people call me T-Bone, I say we call Frank Vivian. <laughs> All right. Second, <laughs> go forth. <laughs> Vivian. What? If you call yeah, Frank Vivian Karen, there you go. <laughs> Whatever. Wasn't, wasn't there a scene in... Um... So I married an axe murderer. Well, Phil Phil Hartman was giving the tour of Alcatraz. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, "But you can call me Vicky." Remember? Vicky, That's one of my all time favorite movies. By the way, it's funny you should mention that. That movie is just so messed up. That it one is. and Mars Attacks are, are yeah. some of my go to movies. If you want to watch something, oh, that and 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 the first three seasons of Arrested Development. Let me put in a special plug for the genius. That is arrested development. Now back to our regular broadcast. So <clears throat> two is one, one is none. Three is better, four is even better. All right, so Revo, Aweber, doesn't matter where you have it, you gotta have your own domain, uh, You know, because that way you're platform agnostic, meaning even if you have a great Instagram following, an okay uh, Facebook following, and an even better YouTube following, you're at the mercy of all of those platforms. Therefore, you need to maintain your own list internally yourself. But Unless you have a an email server, you know, in your basement, it's still hosted by somebody else, and you got to be careful. So even the best of the best, uh, you still want to back it up. And it's easier now to implement these automation auto automations than it ever was before uh, with Zapier. Um, I mean, you can even go in and copy and paste your list into a Google Sheet file weekly, but you can set up a Zapier to do it. Point being, you've got it backed up, and then you take that back up and back it up to a hard drive or a different cloud service, whatever. When you have multiple backups in place, Murphy's Law says you'll probably never even need to invoke them. If you have zero backups in place, bad stuff's going to happen. So we have, we have twofold uh, for, for list maintenance, um, the, the actual data redundancy and the, the, uh, the customer retention. Now, when we talk about sales and marketing, uh, you know, ideally anybody that comes through our pipeline would buy and soon, but that's not the case. We deal with sales cycles, pipelines, lead times, uh, and depending on your industry, you know, it could be a matter of days, weeks, months, years, years. So having a target audience of somebody who has shown at least uh, a minimum amount of interest in your product or service, or even your brand, you're now able to remarket to them uh, either personally and or with an automated general follow-up process. So that way they can turn into a sale later on. Uh, I've seen it in every industry I've done marketing work for, including for my own agency, um, long, long pipeline follow-up. Uh, it, it all comes down to having that list. Yeah. How do you, how do you capture people's emails? What is the best way to do it? Is it through your videos? Would it be through face-to-face uh, -face interviews, podcasts, giving, giving out a website, go here, go to conversionchemistry.com, get on our mailing list. What, how do you do that? It's, it's very specific to the industry, the product and service. Um, you're talking about lead generation. So for a digital product or service, yeah, you wanna give out, you always wanna add value or provide value uh, in, in exchange for getting that email to getting the de-anonymization, which is providing an email name, phone number, uh, and, you know, the more valuable the product or service or how qualified the prospect is or where they're at in the pipeline, you can get more information out of them uh, in a multi-step process. So lead magnets, all right? That's that's when we give out free reports. We give out how-tos. We give out um, best practices. Like, you know, in conversion chemistry, we operate with 100% transparency. So we give you our uh, 10 fatal mistakes that new business owners make and how to avoid them. That's our lead magnet. So it's a, a free report that Frank created. Um, we've updated and modernized. And you know we, we give that out in exchange for contact information. Uh, we also have a, a basic level of membership where we give out a couple of free courses that rotate in and out in exchange for contact information. So the reality is, yeah, sure, you're, you're not ready to buy from us right now. Let us show you why you, you should stick with us because we're going to keep giving you value along the way. Uh, and then that value comes in the form of you know, it's it's an email, uh, a nurturing sequence. You know, Frank writes his version of the newsletter. I write mine, uh, and we stay top of mind. But that can work in in any industry, uh, as you guys know, and you know some of the listeners who have been with us since the beginning. Uh, I have a deep understanding of the car industry uh, and lead generation there. Uh, same principle. We don't really give out lead magnets. I mean, we could. We we've done it. 
but it's you want higher intent uh, shoppers to to purchase a car. Uh, same thing, you know, in online marketing, you have a website that lists your inventory. Um, you want somebody to click on it and, and give you their information. Uh, the best case scenario is I want to buy this car right now. Let's start an online purchasing process. Cool. It's not the reality. You know, some people are more hesitant than others for whatever reason. They want to see the car. They want to test drive it. They need financing. So we got, we got different calls to action buttons on there. All of them do the same thing. Um, basically, it's, it's capture information, name, phone number, email. Then an internal sales process takes over and does the conversions. Uh, which is appointment setting and bringing them in. All right. But that's still operating in a, a perfect sales cycle environment. Um, reality is longer sales cycles for, for, uh, for car buying and, or people who were just uh, window shopping, tire kicking as it were. Um, so we, we keep these lists uh, pretty much in a, a die or buy philosophy, which uh, means we, we keep remarketing to them uh, passively and actively and, um, until they either tell us to shove off, um, you know, by by means of opting out, uh, or eventually they come in and buy stuff from us. And those are the only two options that we really want to have happen because it's the people in the middle, right, Jonesy? That'll kill you. Like they're on your list, but they don't do anything, and you're like, "Who are these people? Why are they here? They they're here, but they're not advancing." And again, everybody in their own time. But you have somebody on your list for a year or two, and you've never heard a peep from them. You're like, "Who are they?" That that. Those people in the middle are the ones that'll get you every time. And and you have to understand something. You have to make your peace with people opting out. That's fine. You're not everybody's cup of tea. They're not in the market as, as much as they thought. Or, you know, you're selling Dodges and they're selling, what's better than a Dodge? Nothing. Wait a second. You're selling Fords. The other person's selling Fords and you're selling Dodges. And they go, oh my God, that Dodge Ram is too cool a truck. I have to drive something less cool. So I'm going to go buy a Ford just hypothetically saying here, guys, that would be a case where they would opt out of your RAM and go with your Ford. That's all. So it, it's its own form of qualification in a way. Right, right. They're raising their hand by opting out and you're saying, yeah. hey, this isn't for me. That's yep. all. And your job, yep. is to, your job is to always be moving people through gently and lovingly and building a rapport, but sitting here with a, you know, a quarter of a million person list is great. What's the click through rate? You know, what's your read rate, et cetera. And Jonesy, you can talk, you can get your geek on and talk a little bit about that. Why do we care about like click through rates and such? What, what don't we just care? Oh, I got a quarter of a million subscribers. That must mean I make a lot of money. Not necessarily, right? No, it's the same thing as having 2 million Instagram followers is you're only going to reach a percentage of them at any given time uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, some are, are technology based. Um, Different email systems have different spam filtering. And unfortunately, sometimes your email can get caught up in that. And we have some ways that we can mitigate that. Um, just the amount of noise that's out there. Even your most loyal fans, the person who opens up your newsletter every single week, they might skip it for whatever reason. And, you know, uh, or, or delete it automatically. There, there's any number of reasons. So a, a good email open rate is like 18%. That's like really good. And that number's diminished. And... Yeah, there's there's some nuances within industry uh, and product and service, but uh, getting anything over ten is you know what the goal should be these days, and yeah, it just kind of goes with that ten percent rule that, that we apply across the board, which is very very high level and and broad stroke of ten percent people are ready to buy, which you know when we apply it to email marketing is ten percent people are, are seeing your thing right now, so. Uh, Right. You want to make sure that you're, you're keeping your open rates that way um, because it matters. What's the point of sending messages out if nobody's seeing it? Um, and traditionally, as your list grows, um, your open rate drops, but you want it to, to bottom out. You want it to bottom out at no lower than 10 percent. I should say is, is a goal metric is is don't go any lower than that. Right. Uh, if you are, that means you may not be targeting the right people with your 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 lead magnet or your lead gen or opt in in the first place. So, I am of the belief that every business needs to start working on a list. I don't care if you have an ice cream store that's open just in the spring and summer, or if it's a mechanic, if it's a coach, if it's a veterinarian, if it's a chiropractor. It doesn't matter. Everybody needs an email list. That is how you stay in touch with people. Let me ask you this. Is, are there statistics on 
how long people hang out on a list before they actually become customers? Um, that would be very, very industry specific. So I don't yeah. have that answer offhand. That's what um, I would say too. I know that's, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll use car sales because car sales and, and retail or uh, uh, real estate are the two that I, I've worked with the most uh, in email marketing. Um, you know, we see seven to eight touches before somebody takes action in the car industry. Uh, and then after that, we put them into an automated process. So it touches and that's not a time scale. That's about 30 days or so. Mm -hmm. 45 days, I'm sorry, 45 days is, is what we set the cadence to. Mm -hmm. Right. And in digital marketing, internet marketing, however you want to call it, it was always the rule of seven. You need seven touches to get somebody to at least become somewhat active or participatory. Now, yeah, if, it's, I, if, it, if it's a hot brand new product, George, it might be like everybody signs up because they want it. You know what I mean? It's right. it's really hard to say. Um, but I'm in full agreement. Even a place like Reed is up here with the ice cream that opens in the spring and closes in the fall. Hey, spring's coming. Reed is, isn't it the first day they open or whatever? You get free ice cream or something like that. Um, so that's important because now you've been away for six months. You want to re- mind your list that you're opening back up or you could say in february hey there's a foot of snow outside but guess what 90 days from now it's going to be may and you're going to be having some readers we want to let you know that we're getting ready can't wait to see you in may just a little top of mind presence i mean why is it that coca-cola still advertises any everywhere is there a person on god's green earth that doesn't know about coca-cola no, they you know, advertise that? everywhere yeah there's no avoiding <laughs> in effect yeah yeah just like my yeah, have, having, oh, having ahead, a sure. list, having a list is like advertising to fans yes. because lists are opt in. Whereas advertising, sure, I guess with social media, you can, you can, you can actually target certain demographics, but there's nothing more precise than people who know what you offer and sign up for your list. Well, exactly. Yes. Because as you say, with, you know, social media, you can fine tune it, build a list of people in a community, but a list people have to do a little bit more. They've got to opt in. Well, actually double opt in, which don't even get me started on. It's like double opt in is you subscribe and then you get an email that says, do you really want to subscribe? It's so dumb, but if somebody double opts in, that means they're interested, man. That means that they're, that they're, you're at least speaking to them enough to get their attention and get them to invest you know and it, it it is a higher quality list and like we said in the beginning you could lose access to any platform at any time just because you have you know quarter of a million facebook people what if they decide they don't like they don't like the way you look gone and you lose it all and that's yep. scary to me that's why yep. you have to at all costs and without fail actively work on building your list because remember tiktok they're talking about it going out of business what about all those people that are big stars on TikTok? Goes out of business. They got nothing. It's over, Johnny. I don't ever want to be in their shoes. And even if there's a rumor of it, how do you start? You're at a quarter of a million people, let's say, on TikTok. How do you get them all to move over? They only know you on TikTok. How many of them you think are going to are going to opt into your website anyway during mm -hmm. the middle of an emergency? The time to do it is in the beginning by incentivizing them with something. And you really have to give to get, don't you, Jonesy? You know, to get an opt-in, it's, it's, you know, you have to give them something of value. And I, dare I say, I'm very impressed with the free stuff that you've helped me put together at Conversion Chemistry because I, I, I'll say, it in, I, I don't know how I can be impartial, but I'll try to be here. It's, it's pretty good stuff, man. It's, like, it's got value to it. It's stuff that you would otherwise pay for. And that's pretty cool. That's given, and it's not blowing our own horn. I'm just using us as an example. Just the product line I know best. Yeah, I mean, you you got it. There's there's compensation, there's incentive for it, and you know the other ubiquitous example is with any e-commerce site. And join our list and get ten percent off your first purchase. That's everywhere. Yeah, I did it just the other day with another one and um, uh, dipyourcar.com. All right, so I was going to buy their stuff anyway because I I've been watching them for the past. Well, I've, I've known them of them for a while. Uh, I just was not in a position to purchase their stuff. What it's it's plastic dip. 
um, but a really highly advanced formula. And they sell kits so you can you know literally paint your car with this plastic coat that, you know, depending on the car, comes in at like under $1,000. You can't get a paint job for that cheap, even at crappy Mako. Um, and you know me, I like to dabble with the the colors of my rides. So <laughs> yes, you um, do. Yeah, you, you brought up the Dodge. And as we know, my Challenger was totaled a few weeks ago at the time uh, of this recording. So uh, I'm still in mourning. Well, I, I'm, 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 I just bought a Corvette, an old Corvette, and I'm buying a Jeep. Those are the two replacements. Oh, dude, you didn't and, tell me about the Jeep. At, it's brand new as of yesterday. It's breaking news as it happens. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna paint them both with this plastic dip. I already ordered one kit. Uh, I got my 10% off, which I didn't really like ask for. It was a nice bonus, um, but it worked. That's how it got me in. And then you know, a good e-commerce setup has some automations in place. I'll give an example: is the uh, the abandoned cart follow-up cadence with an email system, which can be done using a Weber, Revo, Active Campaign. And not the other one we don't talk about. Um, yeah, you're ready to purchase. You put some stuff in your cart on the e-commerce site. And then for whatever reason, you leave. Well, you know, the tracking cookie does its thing. Um, and then since you partially de-anonymized, you know, depending on where you've been on the internet, now you get an email follow-up uh, saying, hey, we noticed, you know, go back to your cart. That's the most simple one. Hey, we noticed you, you didn't purchase. All right, a couple hours, a couple days later, hey, here, take this bonus 5% off. Or here, you may have missed this. So it's staying top of mind in an automated process uh, simply by me not taking an action. All right, well, we're gonna bring this in for a landing. The money is in the list, that's number one. As far as people grabbing your email, they can do it through pop-ups, through sign-in sheets. I know when I worked at the Fan Expo, there was a clipboard with a paper on it. People could sign up to become to get an email from what the Philly podcasting Philly Podcast society and creative arts Alliance. Yeah. And I, and I get emails from that and I've signed up for a lot of things. I'm thinking, uh, I have to go to the UPS store today. They don't have an email. They should. Um, I have to go to my doctor to re up a prescription. He doesn't have an email to stay in touch with me. Um, I'm going to go to maybe go to Mexican tonight and have table for one. They don't have my email. And I'm thinking, my God, what an underserved community. So there's a business idea for our listeners right here. If you can somehow get people to get, get an email list, work with them on that. I mean, that, that right there is a, is a business right there for people. And then of course, use conversion chemistry to promote that business. Oh, and wait, wait, but wait, there's more, okay? Yeah. You have this list, and this is maybe I'll, I'll tease this as for conversion chemistry or a different topic we talked about. Now you can do dirt cheap uh, display ad retargeting on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, the Google ad network. Um, you know, these clicks are, are pennies in the dollar compared to paid search results. Uh, yeah. With your brand, when you got this list, you can hit these people who already give you your information. They're seeing it on yeah. devices and stuff like that. And you don't even have to send an email to do that. More advanced stuff, but I wanted to tease that. Yeah, I'm glad you did. All right, well, I'll give both, I will give both of you the last word on this topic. Frank, go ahead. Build your list and back it up, please, weekly. You won't regret it. And if you back it up twice, back it up three times and back that up again and make sure they buy or die. <laughs> there you go. And then how can people find you guys? Uh, give um, me your email. Say what now? Give me your email. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, frank at conversionchemistry.com. And your email is? Jonesy at conversionchemistry.com. Or you can opt into our newsletter where you will get free resources. You can sign up for our free conversion chemistry basic level membership and have access to free stuff, including how to build an email list. It's worth a lot. All right, gentlemen. Well, at least we whet the appetite of, of people who are thinking of going into business or have a business. And we guilt tripped everyone who doesn't currently capture email lists. Machine, the money machine. is in the list. People are letting money slip through their fingers without having a list. It's found money for every business person and for every person about to go into business in the future. Uh, thank you, my friendly acquaintances, for joining us on the topic of lists. And we'll see you next time on Fire Your Boss.